Have y'all ever been cliff jumping where you jump off a cliff into the water for fun? Yeah? No? Okay. Well, I'm going to use that for an analogy. So if you haven't, hurry up and go do it and come back so you can watch this and you'll understand. <laughs> What's up y'all? It's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach where we talk about real things because it's the real things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. Real just makes things better. It might be harder in the moment, but real is always better. <laughs> Today, I could have talked about so many different subjects because all the things happened this week, all the things. I actually considered talking about forgiveness, reconciliation, planning, when you don't have any idea what's coming next, and a whole bunch of other things. But what I decided to speak on today, it was an accident because I was actually asking God what it is he wanted me to talk about. And it was in my surrender of all the things that he gave me exactly what I was gonna talk about. And it was one of those obvious moments where you say the answer to your question out loud and then realize you just answered your own question. So when I was praying, I said, God, for today's video, I don't know what to focus on. So I'm just going to focus on you. And in that moment, it was like, bam, I know exactly what I'm going to talk about. I don't know if you've heard the verse in Hebrews about fixing your eyes on Jesus. I reread that verse today. And it's one of those obvious but not obvious verses that you've heard a million times and you kind of assume that you know what it means. But when you think about it, how do you fix your eyes on someone who is invisible? Let's just be real practical, okay? So what does it really mean to fix your eyes on Jesus? And the whole passage is talking about hardship. So I'm going to read this passage in Hebrews to you, and then I'm going to talk about a couple things that God revealed to me about this subject. So the passage starts in Hebrews 12, but Hebrews 12, 1 says, therefore, before it goes into the rest of the sentence. And whenever you see a therefore, you have to find out what it's there for. So I'm going to look back at the previous section of scripture that is talking about all the greats of the Old Testament because of their faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And it's usually referred to as the Hall of Faith because it's testimony after testimony of what these greats from scripture did by faith. It talks about the Red Sea parting. It talks about the walls of Jericho falling. It talks about the people trusting God and individuals leading the people by trusting God. And then it comes to the end of the chapter where it's talking about people being tortured and martyred. And about them, it says the world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. What had been promised? was the new covenant made possible by Jesus' death and resurrection. Y'all, we are living in the promise that they died waiting for, that they gave their lives waiting for. Their faith was so strong that they were tortured, beaten, thrown in jail, and killed for a promise they had not yet seen revealed. Honestly, I could stop right there and be super convicted because <laughs> I just need to look at these greats of faith to realize that if they can do it without the new covenant, without the fulfilled promise that Jesus was and is, then I can. I can do this and so can you. But I really wanna get into 12 because I do wanna talk about what it means to fix your eyes on Jesus. So after talking about all the greats of faith, chapter 12 says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, the cloud of witnesses is those who have gone before us, who are cheering us on from heaven, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And here it is in verse two. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, that's us y'all, endured the cross, scorning its shame, which means he defeated and destroyed shame at the cross and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And I'm just going to stop right before four because I think that covers everything we need to talk about. Y'all, this is talking about faith about enduring anything that comes our way, any situation, any circumstance. This passage is talking about faith. It's talking about those who have gone before us, and it's talking about Jesus, the author and perfecter or finisher of our faith. 
the one who makes it possible, our example. And it's saying that with these people who have gone ahead of us and with Jesus, who is the promise fulfilled, we can literally do all that was done before us and more. Because how much more can we endure now that the promise has been fulfilled? So if it's talking about faith and the examples set for us, and the promise fulfilled for us, then what does it mean to fix our eyes on Jesus? It's saying, look up to him. It's saying, remember him constantly. It's saying, don't get in your head about the day-to-day -day worries of life or the stresses and circumstances that you're walking through. Those do not determine the victory. He does. And he was already victorious. So if we fix our eyes on him, who's gone before us, leading the way, who's never left our side, we can endure all things because he already endured the worst thing for us. In fact, he did it with joy. It says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And it says, consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So if you're weary, if you're losing heart, then your focus is not in the right place. And y'all, I'm bringing this up because my focus has not been in the right place. I was letting circumstances and the fear of the unknown really mess with me. And I, I gotta be honest, it took my eyes off the one who sees me through everything so faithfully. When has Jesus ever let me down? Literally never. Sometimes it feels like it's not gonna happen and that he's gonna leave me somewhere and then he doesn't. He always comes through. Feelings don't always tell the truth y'all <laughs> so you've got to have faith over your feelings and you've got to fix your eyes on the one who has never left you who will always be faithful because he's always been faithful because he's always been faithful to you and because he's always been faithful to every single one of the people mentioned in hebrews chapter 11 and all those who have not been mentioned because those mentioned were honored for their faith but that doesn't mean that Jesus wasn't faithful to anyone who did not have faith. Jesus is always faithful. He doesn't change based on our faith. So consider him who endured the cross for us, who endured the cross for you. He's alive. He's well. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And you are his. All right, now back to cliff jumping. <laughs> I promise this will make sense in a second. To give you some context into what I've been processing and going through, I've been so blessed to be able to be in this home for what will be a total of eight weeks, but that ends this Sunday, the 16th of September. And after that, I don't know where I will be. And what's been so frustrating is that I so badly want to know what's next because it's the fear of the unknown, but more the fear of being back in a place of survival mode and exhaustion that really stresses me out. But as I was praying through these things and processing these feelings and asking God all the questions that I have about this next step, he revealed to me that it's more than a trust thing. It's a surrender thing. And it's absolutely a risk in faith thing. And I remembered what it feels like to go cliff jumping and how there are really only two ways to go cliff jumping. One, you're terrified. You crouch down, you crawl to the very edge and you look down and you focus on the rocks. Or you see those that have gone before you, you gauge the distance you have to jump, you take a step backward and you run and you leap into the water. So this may be obvious to you already, but while I was thinking about this, I realized that I just need to run and jump and trust those who have gone ahead of me and trust the one who has gone ahead of me to clear the way, knowing that just like a little kid on the side of a pool jumps into her daddy's arms, that's how this faith and risk thing looks. It's not about focusing on the rocks. It's about focusing on the rock, the author and perfecter of your faith. And very, very practically, I like to use visualization when I'm struggling with all the things. I'll close my eyes. Sometimes I'll even need to go to a quiet place, but I'll close my eyes and I will literally visualize Jesus looking at my face and smiling. And I just stay in that place. I stay in that visualization. And I remember, I remember that he loves me. I remember that I am chosen, not forsaken. I remember that he has good plans for me. And I start thanking him. I start praising him. I start remembering remembering everything he's done and I thank him for who he is. So if you're struggling with any of those things, I highly encourage you to figure out who God is. Figure out if what you've been believing about God is the truth or if it's a lie. And if it's a lie, it's straight from the pit of hell. So find out the truth because the truth will set you free. It's only by knowing the truth that you'll be able to discern the lie and throw it out. 
So get in the word, get in the secret place, spend time growing in intimacy with your father. And I promise you, you'll be able to fix your eyes on Jesus and the next storm that comes your way. You'll be able to focus on the rock instead of the rocks. All right, y'all. I hope that that was helpful. I hope it was encouraging. Next week, this time, I will be out of this house and I don't know where I will be. So pray for me as I pray for you. I love you and I'm so thankful for you. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend and subscribe to my channel. If you want to support this ministry, you can either become a Patreon family member or you can donate via the links in the description box below. All right, y'all. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, tell me one way that you fight discouragement in your faith, and I'll see you next time.